hosted in conjunction with Chris Media. The CEO interview series allows investors to hear directly from the CEOs leading the companies featured on Wholesale Investor. Enjoy the interview and reach out via the details in the description. Hello and welcome to another Chris CEO interview. Today joining us, we have Jeremy Britton from Boston Trading. Thank you so much for joining us today, Jeremy. Thank you. Great to be here. <laughs> so first of all, could you give us a bit of an overview about Boston Trading and the function the company performs? In a nutshell, we make cryptocurrency investing simple and safe for everybody. Um, most people will be familiar with mutual funds through the stock market or through their superannuation. And most people don't have the time to actually sit down and research whether they're going to buy stock in Qantas or Woolworths or what's going on with the market. So they, they put their money with a trusted fund manager and the fund manager diversifies into a whole bunch of different things and looks after it for them. And they can just make money while they're sleeping, while they're working, while they're doing it because they know someone else is looking after it for them. So we've, we've basically launched the world's first mutual fund for cryptocurrencies, mm -hmm. where we actually take care of the investing so you can do whatever you do. Fantastic. That sounds super exciting. I know lots of people are interested in investing crypto, but sometimes they just don't know where to start. So that sounds brilliant. Um, could you tell us a bit more about the investment methodology and the types of companies that you invest in? Well, my... I started in financial planning back in 1992, so probably before you were born. Mm -hmm. um, and I've had like you know, 25, 30 years researching stocks and companies and things like that and creating portfolios for my clients. So when I was introduced to crypto, I was like, oh, this is just like a little tiny stock market that's unregulated. So there's a lot of rubbish in there. And around about 90% of the projects that are launched onto the market are rubbish. They're scams, they're rug pulls, mm -hmm. they're whatever. But we do our due diligence. We do a four-step uh, research project process, which is based on a nine-step process that I used to use for the stock market. And we actually pick the winners that way. So in the last in the last few years since we've been running, we've actually managed to buy some really good projects when they were first coming out because we did a research into them. And those projects have gone on to make more than 10,000% and we've done that six times in our portfolio. Uh, obviously, not, not everyone wins 10,000%, but mm -hmm. some of them, you know, 300%, 400%, those things are kind of fairly standard for cryptocurrency because it's like the stock market on steroids. Just a yeah. warning that it can, it can <clears throat> drop just as quickly. And mm -hmm. obviously, in the last 12 months, we've seen crypto markets come down significantly, which gets a lot of bad press. Um, what people also need to realize is Netflix stock is down by 75%. Mm. You know, these afterpay companies are down by up to 90%. Um, you know, even PayPal and, and some of these other companies are down quite significantly. So it's right across the market what's happened in the last 12 months. But even, even saying that, you know, we've had really good returns on average because people don't invest for, you know, a week or for a year. They usually put their money in there for two or three years. So even yeah. with the, the latest drawdown that we've had in the market, uh, Boston Coin has still averaged over 200% for the last three years. Fantastic. That's amazing. So it's obviously quite a competitive space. Um, so could you talk about any competitors that, that you do have and, and what's your competitive advantage over those? Uh, well, again, we were first. And when we first okay. came to the market in, in 2016, there were no crypto mutual funds. So mm -hmm. we just modeled ourselves off the mutual funds, the stock mutual funds, which people will be familiar with Fidelity and Vanguard and BlackRock and JP Morgan and those sort of ones. Um, so we put in a small entry fee. We put in a 2% annual management fee, which is what a lot of these bigger guys do. And that was it. And we just looked after the portfolio and we looked after our customers and, and gradually increased our clientele. And for probably the first two or three years, there were no other competitors. And we mm. sort of looked at ourselves and went, like, are we doing it wrong? Why is there no one else doing this? It seems like a, an easy thing, like make crypto simple for everybody. Um, but no one else was doing it. And we thought, well, we can't be wrong because we're making money. We're doing it very effectively. And then after we'd been running for about three years, 
another competitor that came into the marketplace and they were charging a 20% fee. And we're like, oh my God, are people going to pay 20%? And their customers were like, well, if I'm making 100% a year, I'm happy to pay 20%. Mm. Um, and then another competitor came to market and said, well, if those guys are charging 20%, we're going to charge 30%. And we sort of looked at them and went, wow, like we're so much cheaper than everybody else. Yeah, and yeah. Whatever. You know? <clears throat> and, and funnily enough, um, during, the, during the conference or just after the conference that we were with you in, in Sydney, um, someone actually came to me and said, what's to stop one of the competitors from investing their funds with you uh. and charging us 20% and then you know, getting you to do all the work for 2%. And I said, well, if they did it through a holding company anonymously, we'd never know. It could be BlackRock writing out the checks rather than mm. XYZ company. And about three or four days later, I had one of the competitors who was at the conference who called me and said, would you mind looking after some of our clients' funds? Wow. Because you do it very effectively and you do it very cheaply. And I was like, well, at My least gosh. he was honest. At least he was honest. Yeah. And it gives you that credibility, doesn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, we've, we've been going for uh, seven years now, so we've got a, a quite extensive track record, which no one mm. else has, mm. and obviously been through the ups and downs of the market. And yeah. again, it's, it's, it's relatively new. Crypto has only been around for 14 years. Um, but again, modelling off the stock market and some of the projects that we've invested into, you can sort of see where the peaks and troughs are going to be. And yeah. that's, that's why we actually, you know, in 2019, October 2019, we sent out a newsletter to our clients saying, you know, get out of stocks. There's going to be a stock market crash. Yeah. Um, and, you know, get into gold, crypto and silver, basically. That was our, our three recommendations. And we didn't know there was going to be a disease because the disease outbreak had, hadn't happened. But okay. because of our analysis of the stock market and the commodities markets and things like that, it was looking very, very much like just before the GFC. Is what the market conditions were looking I like. See. Yeah. So we warned our investors, and of course, yeah, the disease happened. The stock market tanked. Um, gold went up fifty percent. Silver went up a hundred percent, and uh, crypto went up about six hundred or seven hundred percent during mm. the pandemic. So yeah, happy days. And again, like Brilliant. that's a little bit of experience in crypto, but extrapolating it out to to world markets and knowing what to look for. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, Okay, and could you talk a bit about um, the team behind Boston Trading and, and the sort of skills that they bring? Well, obviously, I think I'm awesome. <laughs> of course. And you know, e even even the prediction for the um, for the 2020 crash was not the first one. Um, we warned our clients when I was in financial planning. We warned our clients of the global financial crisis two years before that happened. Because again, watching the stock markets and commodity markets, regular things sort of reoccur over time. If you, if you pick a 200 year chart of the Australian market or the US market in stocks and property, you can see what happened during a war, what happened when there was high inflation, what happened when there was high interest rates. So you can kind of predict with about 70% accuracy what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. So. Again, that's that's when I when I first started in financial planning thirty years ago, I was young and young and inexperienced. So I followed on from the guys who'd been in the market for fifty years, and they mm -hmm. use charts of the last two hundred years. So that's what I do, and just recognise the patterns when they occur. Um, Jennifer, who's the CEO, she's had twenty five years experience in corporate law, mm -hmm. corporate governance. She sits on a, a large number of boards. Uh, she was also the first non-US person and the first female to um, get NASDAQ accreditation. So she's licensed to give NASDAQ training um, throughout you know, the Southern Hemisphere, which is, which is amazing for her. Um, lots of talent on the team, uh, lots of very effective people. We keep our team small. Uh, we, mm -hmm. all work from, we all work from home. Okay. And I mean, Warren Buffett's the world's greatest investor with a team of five, five or six people in Berkshire Hathaway. So mm. we, we normally have our, our core team of five or six people. And during busy periods, we'll outsource stuff. So we might have 10 or 11 people working for us and then shrink it back down as we, as we don't need them. So it keeps things fantastic. very cost effective and very yeah. friendly. And yeah, we don't pay for the high overheads of, of having a big corporate office or anything. Yeah, makes sense. Super efficient. Brilliant. So could you tell the listeners today um, 
about any kind of milestones that you've recently hit um, and then perhaps give them an idea of what's coming up for the next six to 12 months. Um, yeah, well, obviously be, being the first crypto mutual fund is a, you know, a feather in our cap. Mm -hmm. And we're obviously, again, very proud of our track record and, and exceeding the returns of Bitcoin for the last five years in a row. Um, we've, we've beaten Bitcoin again this year because of our diversification mm -hmm. model. And uh, we were the first crypto mutual fund to list on Morningstar. So for those who, who aren't aware of Morningstar, when you go to the accountant or the financial planner and ask them to invest in something for you, they look on Morningstar. That's where they find the approved companies and approved things that they can, they can listen to. Um, and Morningstar is, is all around the world. Um, it's probably top secret, but I'll give it away anyway. Uh, we're having chats with the SEC um, Securities and Exchange Commission in the US this morning mm -hmm. uh, because crypto legislation is coming in and the SEC yeah. wants to regulate crypto but also the Com Commodities Futures Trade Bureau wants to wants to regulate crypto as well because they're arguing oh it's it's like a stock market and the other guys are saying no no it's more like a commodities market because Bitcoin's more like gold. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're having a bit of a battle at the moment but draft legislation has been slated for December, January and mm. we obviously want to be, you know, approved and regulated and things before the rules come in. We've been we've been following the guidelines of the stock market and the mutual funds for the last seven years. But when the crypto legislation comes in, we want to be in front of that. So we've already spoken to some of the senators yeah. in Australia who are passing legislation in Australia, and we were chatting to the guys in the US this morning. So fantastic. Um, also looking into the markets in India and Singapore. Um, because India is leading the world at the moment. They've got about, I think, about 13% of the population invests in crypto. Wow. In, in most other countries, it's only between 4 and 5%. And Singapore has set themselves up as a, a major financial hub in Asia, servicing all of those markets as well. So we're having a chat to a few guys and looking at how we can expand and branch out around the world. We're, we're in 61 countries at the moment. We'd love to be in 190. Super exciting. Wow. Thank you so much, Jeremy. That was fantastic. And I'm sure the, the listeners um, have got a good understanding behind Boston Trading. And if any of the listeners do want to reach out to Jeremy and speak further, there's going to be a QR code here on the screen you can scan and that will go into Jeremy's deal room. Um, there also will be his um, contact details so you can reach out directly. Um, yeah, and I'm sure Jeremy will, will set up a meeting with you and, and chat further about this. So thank you so much, Jeremy, for coming on today. And um, we'll speak to you very soon. Thank you very much.